Hello and welcome back. I was looking for another AGP card to pit against my ATI AGP HD 3850 and after not having much luck on eBay, I tried Facebook Marketplace. I found this 7800 for £40 and for an extra £10 I persuaded the seller to post it. This is apparently a late release Gainwood Bliss Golden Sample Goes Like Hell Edition NVIDIA 7800 GS Plus AGP card. It has a bridge chip just like the ATI HD 3850 to make it run in an AGP slot and from what I can tell it's a 20 pixel pipeline cut down version of the NVIDIA 7900 which had 24 pipelines. As soon as I got it popped into a system and found that it worked, I then popped open Hardware Monitor and ran it through 3D Mark 2001. After it finished, I was horrified to see that it had reached temperatures of 125 degrees from an idle of 65. After opening it up, I found that whatever thermal paste they used to be had dried up years ago, so I replaced it and tested it again. I was relieved to find it now idled at 38 degrees and after a Fermark torture test, only hit 58. So considering my success with replacing the cooler on my 3850, I wondered if I could do the same again with this card. Firstly, you have to remove the utterly pointless Gainwood aluminium cover plate. Once that's done, removing the cooler is exceptionally easy, as it's held on by this rather cunning wire sprung backplate. Unclip the wires and the cooler just drops off, showing my replaced thermal pad and pasting. A test fit of the cooler I'm going to use shows a problem. Although the pins fit, a metal plate has clearance issues with capacitors at the rear of the card. Well, I can sort that out with a hacksaw. Once that's off and the cooler test fitted again, we can see another problem. The copper plate of the Yakasa Vortex Neo isn't flat. It has an outer rim and central section that protrude about a half millimetre. Ordinarily, that wouldn't be an issue, as normally a GPU cooler sits centrally over the chip die it's cooling. But unlike my 3850 where the bridge chip is on the back, this card has its bridge on the same side as the GPU die, and as they're rather inconveniently on the same side, the cooler plate needs to cover both. As we can see from this overlay here, it doesn't. Due to the copper plate having this milled out section, each chip is only half covered. Not a problem. For £4, I bought a 10cm by 10cm 1mm thick copper sheet from Amazon, and figured I'd cut it down to match the copper cooler base. With some thermal paste in between, I can then bypass the cutout channel and it should still be better than with the stock cooler. First, I wanted to cut down the aluminium outer plate so it would fit, so I did some basic measurements and took it outside to cut the marked section off. After refitting it to the cooler, it was time to measure up for the copper plate. The plate needed to be 62mm from edge to edge and have its mounting holes 53mm apart, so again I went outside with my hacksaw. After cutting it down, I then did a terrible job of marking out my hole locations and drilled them through. Miraculously, I was accurate enough in order for it to actually work, and a test fit showed it sat at least mostly flush with the copper base of the cooler. 
I figured once it was all assembled and the screws were put on that it would all squoosh together as I had planned in my mind. After a generous helping of thermal paste was put on between the copper plates, I repasted the card and fitted it all together. Although they're not in this video, I also went back and added some thermal pads on top of these two components as they were in contact with the aluminium plate. Now the job was done, it was time to test my work. Thankfully the PC started up just fine with no exploding graphics cards, so once I was in Windows I checked the thermals and found it running at 34 degrees, so far better than stock. After running my Fermark torture test again, it only got up to 50 degrees, so my silly copper sandwich gamble paid off. In case you wanted to replicate what I've done here, the copper sheet can be had from Amazon for £3.99 and you can get the Vortex Neo Cooler, which is boxed new old stock from eBay, for only £9.95. To wrap up, I'd just like to say congratulations to my friend Ben, who after years of sitting opposite me on the help desk, handed in his notice, flew to America and got married earlier today. Anyway. I've run out of high-end AGP cards to modify, so I imagine my next video will be to pit the ones I have against each other to see which one is fastest. So I'll see you then. Bye-bye!